So for ballpoint pen, you can use any sort of ballpoint pen that you have. Um, I would experiment if I were you. Um, go around the house, try different ones. Sometimes I actually find the really cheap free ones that you get from like the bank or a parade or something is actually just as good as getting a more expensive one. I do really like these Crystal Clear Blick or Bic brand. Um, I've been using them since childhood and not necessarily always using them for art. Um, so these work really well. Um, I like to have a little bit of cushion underneath when I'm doing this. So I have my paper on top of a few sheets of newsprint. You could also use your sketchbook for this if you wanted to, um, to ensure that you have like a nice soft sort of cushion underneath your paper. Um, maybe a scrap piece of paper or a sketchbook page for testing out. Sometimes it's good to kind of just warm up your touch. And so if you kind of, you know, try out the pen. So like this one, I just grabbed from the cabinet and it was kind of dead. It wasn't wanting to work. So sometimes it's nice to test that out before you actually start working on the surface. Um, when you are using your ballpoint pens, it's always best to kind of go in one direction with the pen. So I like to go up and down rather than across. Um, sometimes though, if I want to smooth it out, um, I will cross shade. And a lot of times in other um, like pencils often go like the opposite direction. Um, but sometimes with ballpoint pen, I find that if I just go slightly diagonal, it will smooth it out a little bit more and I'll see less lines, right? So just a slight tilt will kind of fill in the tooth of the pen so that you don't see a lot of lines. But with a little bit of practice, you can get this to look really, really smooth. Um, another little tip for you, besides you know barely moving the pen across the surface, um, you notice that I'm kind of got it angled a little bit for this nice light value, um, is that you can use a blending stump with this. I picked this tip up a few years ago at a camp. And so if I go and barely press, I can fill in a little bit more of the tooth that way as well. So a little bit of a comparison. You can see it kind of softens it up a little bit. Just make it a little bit darker because it's smearing it around, right? But you don't want to press hard. Anytime you press hard, you're going to be damaging your paper. Um, I've also found that I can lighten a little bit by using an eraser. So if I accidentally went too dark, notice how I was able to erase away some of it, right? So that is a trick too that I've learned in recent years um, that I didn't know um, I could do. So make sure you've got some good um, pens to start with. Um, if you have a blending stump, make sure it's a brand new one. Don't be using one that you used in the past with like, um, pencil or charcoal. You can also probably smudge with your finger if you really needed to, or a soft piece of paper cloth. Um, if you're in school, you can always borrow a blending stump from me for this. Um, there is one in the art supply pack for my students. However, we are going to be using that for charcoal. There you go. See, it smudges with your finger and erases some. Right? But you'll never get it back to the pure white paper.